Good day everyone, this video is going to be about drum comping. I'm going to share with you my workflow and the intention of my workflow is to save as much time as possible to make drum comping easy, quick and a little bit techy because we're going to be using some keyboard bindings, some shortcuts. We're going to be using a macro that I have built to save time when I'm doing some repetitive tasks in Cubase 13. So buckle up, this should be fun. A few things to mention about drum comping. Drum comping is something that happens just before drum editing. It's basically the selection that you make of the various stakes that you have made. And what's particular about drums and any multi-miked instruments, it's that you are doing some vertical editing. Because you have multiple microphones being in a phase relationship with each other, you want to have sections that are vertical in order to have the phase make sense, in order for you to not hear artifacts in the other takes. Let's just jump right in Cubase and see how I make this happen. First thing I want to do is have an overview of the arrangement window. This is what we are going to work with. I have here the pre-production that the band sent me in order for me to be able to track. And these are my drum tracks right there. The multi-mic instrument, I have 15 tracks uh, exactly. How we're gonna proceed. First thing I want to do is show you uh, the track versions that you should be seeing in the inspector window. The inspector window is this section on the left. And if you do not see the track versions that are right here. You can right click in the inspector. You're going to see setup sections. You click on that and then you're going to see track versions as an option. So you can click it on and off. Second thing that I want to do before I start comping my tracks is make room in my arranger window. There is a lot of things that are right now that are showing that I don't need to see. And if I want to be focused and work quickly, I want to make room for my comping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close some windows. The right window, that is the control room and the meter, I don't need it, so I'm going to close it. In the upper right, you see here, there's the toggle for that. And for me, it is control, alt and R for right. I can toggle it off. And there's also the channel window right here. That is quite useful, but I don't need it. So I'm going to toggle it off as well. So control alt and C toggles it off. One last thing that I will do is drag the track length to the left so that I don't, I don't need to see the freeze, the lanes and not even the edits. So I'm going to drag this right there. So now I have much more room in my arranger window. Next thing we're going to want to do in order to be able to do some group editing on our tracks is to put them in a folder. Click on the first track, which is the kick in, it's selected, and then we're gonna shift click on the last one, which for me is the ride, and then we're gonna add them to a folder. I have a shortcut for that, which is control, shift, and F. This puts them in a folder. I'm just gonna lengthen this so you can see. I'm gonna call it drums, enter, and they are now in a folder. There's also another way to do that. If you select these tracks, you can right click, move selected tracks to new folder, right? There's the same thing that will happen. Now that they are in a folder, there's this that I need to activate, group editing. I toggle that on. And from that point on, when I select a track, every track of that version will be selected. Look at that, et voila, they're all selected. So that's going to speed up the process of vertical comping. Future me here editing the video and I thought it would be a great idea to create a accompanying PDF for this video. For those of you who want to have a step-by-step -step guide to follow along with the mouse like shortcuts, the macro and everything else step-by-step -step with uh, screenshots of Cubase. So I created that and it's free and you can download it in the description. Moving on. The next thing that we're going to talk about is how to shift quickly between track versions. If you see those track versions on the left, I have a lot of versions of this particular song. I, I think it was my first song. I was warming up, so I did 
seven takes, which is a lot for my standards anyways. If I want to shift between those versions, I have to go with my mouse and click on those various versions in order to shift between them. To me, this becomes very boring very quickly and time consuming. So what I did is I went and looked up in the key commands of Cubase to figure out if there was some way to make this a key command. So control shift and K will bring up the key command window. And in the search command, I will type track versions. And I'll see track versions showing up. You toggle that on. And if you drag, you will see next version and previous version. And you see these uh, things are assigned to control shift H, control shift G. Control shift H, I go to the next version. Next version and G, I come back. But this is not a comfortable thing to do on a keyboard because it's a little bit spaced out. So my, my hand is almost cramping like this. So what I do instead is I use this mouse, which is a very cheap and simple mouse. It's a cheap gaming mouse. I bought it for 20 bucks, right? And it's got seven buttons that I can program. And I'll show you how I program them for specifically track versions. I use this little program that comes with the mouse and this allows me to program any key binding to any button. In my profile, profile number three, because I can have 10 profiles, this one, if I go to keys, you see um, key number four, which is the side button right here, is a combo key of left control, left shift, and G. And the number five is the same thing, but H. And now I'm gonna apply this. Once that is done, I will be able to shuffle from my versions just using the side buttons of my mouse. Ah, that is very satisfying and very quick. So I'm saving time right there already. Other buttons that I've programmed that I toggle on and off often when I'm doing comping is the grid. Just a little grid button that you have here. I assigned it to another button that's on top. If I click it, it toggles on and off my grid. The last button that I have programmed on my mouse is the bounce key. Bounce is when you want to commit your choices. Let's say you have a little section of track number two, little section of track number four. You want to commit it. You select those two tracks and then you bounce it and it becomes like one version of the track. There's one last thing that we need to do before we start comping the track and actually putting the workflow to work is to create a macro so that we can have quickly a way to make our selection and copy that selection to the comp track version that we have created. If you look in my track versions on the left, the last track is called comp. If I click on it, you will notice there is nothing in there. That is because every selection that I will make will get copied there and every other versions that I have is still intact and I can still reuse it. So how do we do that with a macro? Let's go into the key commands again. On the bottom in Cubase 13, you have the macros. And I have a macro that is called copy selection paste to comp. This is the name that I've come up with so that I can identify it, that I know what it is. And if you go and toggle that open, you will see the commands that are included in this macro. The first thing that happens is a copy. And then I've assigned multiple next version on the track version shortcut. I don't see myself doing anything more than seven versions of a track that would be, you know, rare. So this is a safe bet. And afterwards, edit based at origin. By the way, I have assigned this to a uh, key that is control alt shift and x so everything is close in my left hand control alt shift and x are very close it's just like this Doop. so let me try to use that right now i'm in uh, my comp right now let me go back to version 7 let's see if we keep going here <laughs> Okay.
Okay, let's go like this. Right there, my selection is made. Now I'm gonna hit Control, Alt, Shift, and X. This was very quick. Instantly, I am in my comp track, and I see that my selection was copied. Let's listen to it, and see if it makes any sense. It kind of works, right? Just for the purpose of demonstration. And then I would keep going. I'm down to uh, measure 19. So we take this section. Let's pretend that's what we want. Macro, boom, done. And I keep going like this. I could go all day. Let's go track number three. This section, let's go, boom. I'm on the comp. Oh, looks like there's an issue. Not really. Select this, drag left. And we've got selections quickly adding up to the comp track. And now let's just say I'm satisfied and I want to commit this section of the song. I'm going to grab everything and I'm going to use my key binding for committing. Replace events. Yes, they are replaced. They are now one big block of a committed comp that I can choose to edit now. So hopefully that helps you to speed up your drum comping process or any other multi mic instrument process where you need to comp and make selections in a vertical fashion. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like, consider subscribing, helping a small channel out. And if you think somebody needs this video to speed up their workflow, then send it their way. May your drum comping be swift and over with in record time.